Good morning. Good morning. We're live. Back with another video. Yes. The Lord is good. Is he not? Crazy things going on in the world, but still we can praise the almighty God because he's in control of everything. Um, today we'll be in the soul soaring uh, songs and hymns. I'll get it right one day. Um, we're going to sing number 258, Christ Receiveth sinful men Christ receiveth sinful men <clears throat> here we go sinners Jesus will receive sound the word of grace to all who the heavenly pathway leave all who linger all who fall sing it o'er and o'er again Christ receiveth sinful men. Make the message clear and plain. Christ receiveth sinful men. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to sing the whole song. Um, but man, that's a great song. I love that song. Sing that song all day. Anyways. Um, Christ receiveth sinful men. Thank God he uh, received me as a sinner. Otherwise, I would be in a bad position. Uh, here we go. Our opening verse is going to be in the Old Testament from the uh, prophet Hosea. And we're going to read chapter 14, um, uh, verses 1 through 9. Let's read the whole, uh, let's read the whole thing. Why not? <clears throat> Bible says in Hosea chapter 14. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord, saying to him, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously, so we will render the calves of our lips. Asher shall not save us, we will not ride upon horses, neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are our gods, for in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. I will heal their backsliding, I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel, he shall grow as the lily, and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread, and his beauty shall be as an olive tree and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall receive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with the idols? I have heard him and observe him. I am like a green uh, fir tree. For me is thy fruit found. Who is wise, and he shall understand these things, prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. The word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. There's a famous saying that goes... <clears throat> one man's trash is another man's treasure. You ever heard that one? One man's trash is another man's treasure. We just had a change of presidents here in the United States. Some people call the new president trash. Other people call the new president, oh, a treasure, a savior. Um, I'm not here to convince you today one way or the other. But what we will talk about today is is God's grace and God's mercy to us sinners because um, the Bible says that all of us, all of our works are as filthy rags compared to uh, the Lord. We all come short of the glory of God. So if you have a King James Bible, um, go ahead and open up to the, uh, the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 21. That's where we will begin today. <clears throat> the Bible gives us 
a doctrine um, that to love our enemies and to pray for those who perse- who persecute us. And this is a hard thing to do, um, very hard, easier said than done for sure, because our natural instinct when people attack us or they're mean to us is to fight back. It's really hard to love your enemies. It's one of the hardest things um, to do, I would say. Uh, now, I want to look at, look at a verse here in Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse 28. But before I read this, you know, I want I want you to ask yourself a question. Would you rather have somebody in your life tell you that they're a good friend to you? Hey, I'm your friend. I love you. Uh, and so on. And then later on, you find out that they're cheating on you or they're they're lying behind your back or stealing from you or some something like that. Or would you rather have somebody who, you know, maybe they don't really talk to you very much. Uh, maybe they don't even really particularly like you. Um, but, the, you know, they kind of just leave you alone. But when you do deal with them and you do talk to them, they're at least honest with you. You know, maybe they don't say the nicest things, but at least they're honest. Um, and they treat you fair. You know, they don't steal from you. But they deal with you fairly, you know. And they don't go behind your back. You know, who? which one of those two people would you rather deal with? So Jesus, in Matthew chapter uh, 21 here, starting in verse 28, kind of uh, gives us a similar scenario. Um... And let's see what Jesus has to say about this. Okay, let's see. Uh, Verse 28. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. So Jesus says, Hey, go to work, son. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. You see, so Jesus is talking about two sons here. Uh, The first son, well, let's continue reading this. And he came to the second, verse 30, and said likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. So, you have, you have the first son here who tells his dad the truth. He says, you know what? I'm not going to help you, dad. I don't want to go work in your vineyard. But then later on, he changes his mind and he does go work in the vineyard and he decides to help. Then you have this second son who tells his father, yeah, dad, you know I love you, dad. Of course I'll go work in your vineyard today, right? But see, he lied to his dad. He never went to work. He never did what he said he was going to do. Sound familiar? Let's let's finish this little story off here. Verse 31 says, Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They said, said unto him, The first, Jesus. Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. So Jesus is, is talking to the church leaders here. And he's basically telling them, you guys are like the second son, right? Because the church leaders, the Pharisees that Jesus was talking to, were um, uh, making themselves appear to be real holy. You know, they, I'm sure they, they uh, wore the holy robes and they went to the temple and prayed every day, but they were lying, right? They were telling God, we're going to do, we're going to do your work, but they weren't really doing it, right? And see, you can't fool God. See, God always sees everything. He can even see the thoughts and intentions of your heart, you see. But the thing about Jesus is that he always gives us a chance to get it right. Just like the first son who at first said, nah, I don't want to go to work. But then later on, he went to work, right? See, God would rather us be like that. He would would rather us go out there and mess up in our lives, do some uh, wicked sins, and then come back to God and say, you know what, I'm real sorry. You know, I, sh- I should have just followed you and obeyed you in the first place. I'm going to do that from now on. You see, we don't want to make the mistake of being like the second person, right? Where we um, 
tell God we're going to do what he says and then don't do it. But we also need to be willing to give people a second chance when they do decide to come around, right? Like if people decide, I'm going to go live a wicked lifestyle, and then and then one day they want to come back um, and start doing the right thing, form a better relationship with you, you need to be willing to accept them back. I want to touch on briefly before we get into the next reading, um, our opening reading from Hosea. Hosea was a prophet that God instructed to go marry a prostitute, okay? You, you say, why would God do that, Sean? <laughs> well, you know, for one thing, I think uh, he wanted Hosea to demonstrate how corrupt Israel had become. So he was comparing Israel to like a prostitute, like a promiscuous woman. And everybody knows how ridiculous it would be for a man to seek out a wife who was of the streets, right? Who was a, a, a harlot. So it's kind of God's way of showing Israel themselves, saying, hey, take a look at yourself. This is what you look like. Um, just as ridiculous as it is for a man to marry a whore, you know, that's how ridiculous you guys look to me by uh, not obeying my commandments, right? By, by creating all these false idols and expecting me, your God, to still be your God and to still bless you. Um, but I believe, you know, God also wanted to show us another aspect of his his mercy in this story, right? God God's saying, hey, look, even though you 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 did bad, Israel, like a prostitute, you went out there and you worship false gods, if you get it right, I'll accept you back. If you turn back to me, get rid of the false uh, false idols and you repent. And you know, that's how we need to be. We can't let our hearts get so cold towards people, towards other people, our fellow man, our fellow neighbor, that we don't keep that door of opportunity open that someday hopefully they'll get it right, they'll repent and we could be friends. So don't burn any bridges, don't burn any relationships in your in your life. That's uh, something you should not do lightly. Like people, especially now on social media, are real quick to uh, block, 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 block. Oh, unfriend you, unfriend you, right? Like um, just delete you. Uh, I think they call that uh, ghosting somebody but anyway you see god's not like us you know he he doesn't ghost us right he's not just gonna leave us out to uh hang us out to dry um so to speak you know he he loves us even when we do wrong he wants us to get it right and to get back on track because a lot of the times in our lives you know people they do things to us they hurt us they may hurt our feelings you know, by the way they treat us, uh, they may say hurtful things to us, and you know, maybe they don't say anything at all, and maybe that's the problem. Maybe they're, maybe you uh, think that they're ignoring you, or they are ignoring you, right? And you know, sometimes this stuff could happen, uh, and it's not even on purpose, right? Maybe somebody's treating you a certain way that they don't know uh, something wrong, that they don't know they're actually uh, getting on your nerves or hurting your feelings, right? It could be completely on accident, whatever the case is, a lot of the times we respond to that by inflicting pain back to that person because we're hurting ourselves inside. So our natural response is, uh, I'm hurting, so I'm going to make you hurt, right? Or you're causing the pain, so shame on you, right? It's a natural response, but Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says, then I say, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. See, Jesus followed after the Spirit, and he wants us to follow after the Spirit. Not the, lu not the lust of our flesh. The lust of our flesh wants to hurt people who hurt us, right? But see, when we follow after the Spirit... We're more concerned of what God's will is, not our will, right? Not our fleshly appetite of, of, of hurting people who hurt us. God says, no, I want them to get, them, get it right. You need to love them, right? God's will is to love your neighbor as yourself, to treat others how you would want to be treated. That's the golden rule, right? Easier said than done, I know. But let me tell you something. 
one of the things that I've learned over the years is, and I, and I try to practice this more and more and more, right? I'm trying to get into the practice of doing this. But, you know, when somebody comes against me, uh, however it might be, you know, maybe they cut me off on the road or, or maybe they uh, just give me a bad look or they don't smile, whatever it is, right? When, when, they, uh, when somebody does something that I don't appreciate or I feel like um, they're treating me less than, instead of retaliating and treating them back that same way um, how they treated me, you know, what I try to do is I try to practice the opposite. I try to go the extra mile above and beyond and be really, really extra kind and nice and to this person. And I try to walk in the spirit more and, and like I said it's hard to do and I don't always do it but at least I always have it in my mind or in the back of my mind that I should be doing this right and you know so the, like the basically the more a person hurts me hurts my feelings or whatever the more I try to do good to them and I think that's what the Bible is teaching is that we need to be merciful to those who uh, who are our enemies who are against us because it's God's will. I mean, think about it. If that was you, if you were to reverse the roles and you were the one hurting somebody, would how would you rather them treat you? Would you rather them treat you mean back? Or would you rather them still be nice to you? You know? Um, I would rather somebody just be nice to me, right? That would, that would make me more inclined to be nice back to them uh, if I was mean, right? Um... But let's look at Matthew chapter 9. Where, where are we here? Matthew chapter 9. And we're going to read verses 9 through 13 and see what Jesus has to say about this. Um, and Jesus passed forth from hence. This is Matthew chapter 9 verse 9. And he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the recep receipt of custom. Matthew is a tax collector. And he, said unto, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus came to call sinners to repentance. He came to receive sinful men. Jesus would rather a sinner turn from their wicked ways and start doing what's right, than to have somebody proclaim that they're this holy man of God who's lying, who really isn't following, uh, practicing what they preach. Um, they're basically like uh, hypocrites, Hi hypocrisy, right? So Jesus cares for us sinners. We could see in this passage that he invited the publicans and the sinners in to eat with them. He invited them over for lunch. He said, come on. Come hang out with me. I'll teach you something about the Bible. We'll talk about the Bible. We'll talk about, we'll treat each other good. You know, he had mercy, he had compassion. And you know, that's what I think we need to learn today to do, especially in these days of, after the election. You know, there's tension still. Um, I hear people saying, hey, if you're a Trump supporter, uh, shame on you. I don't want nothing to do with you. And then they'll point the finger at the other camp and say, oh, if you're a Biden supporter, shame on you. I want to have nothing to do with you, right? But maybe that's the exact same person that we need to be loving. That person that you're pointing a finger at, maybe that's the person you should go over there and be nice to, be kind to. Now, I'm not saying that every single stranger, you need to go bless them and, and wash their feet, right? But I am saying that you need to make sure you're not just punishing people or hating people without first at least giving them a chance to get it right. You know, at least uh, don't just burn that bridge for no reason, right? You know, um, especially our brothers and sisters in Christ, especially for uh, fellow believers of God and Jesus who who uh, believe the Bible and believe in Jesus. 
you know, if you can't get along with your fellow saints and you can't learn to forgive your brothers and sisters in Christ, um, <laughs> you know, and that's not to say that uh, even the saints can't uh, fight amongst each other and, and have their differences, but because that'll happen. But, you know, let's look what Jesus said in First John chapter 4, verse 20. Jesus said, or the Bible says, if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love uh, God whom he hath not seen? This is the commandment we have, we have from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. You need to love your fellow brother. Say, oh, but they don't think the way I think. They're, they're a Biden supporter. They're a Trump supporter. You need to love them. You do. Show some patience. Show some long suffering. You know, and some people will be like Matthew, the tax collector here in this story, and and they'll get it right right away, and they'll they'll go follow Jesus, right? But some people won't. You know, that's when we really need to have that long suffering, that patience, and we need to pray for them. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And love them anyways. Now, I'm not a pacifist. Don't get me wrong. If somebody's coming at you and, and really uh, seeking to do you some serious harm, you need to defend yourself, right? I'm not a, I'm not a non-violent uh, pacifist preacher, but you know what I am is an activist. I believe that there's a time and a place for peace and there's a time and a place for war. Just like Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 8 says, there's a time to love and a time to hate. There's a time for war and there's a time for peace. And I want to focus in on that peace part today. We need to be peacemakers in this world. We need to love each other. You know, what's what's it going to hurt for you to uh, give somebody a drink of water? You know, who may have said some mean words to you. Buy them a gift. Buy them something nice. Give them a smile. Say, hey, how's it going? Check in on them. Wave to your neighbors, you know. Uh, be nice. Be kind to people. Because war really needs to be our last option. Um, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the Uh, come to repentance. You know, Jesus didn't come here on this earth to die for our sins and suffer on the cross just so that somebody else can spit on us and we can grab that spit and rub it back in their face, right? Sometimes, you know, it's okay to just clean that spit off and say, I forgive you. Have a great day, right? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It came right off. It's not going to kill you to uh, show a little compassion, show a little uh, humbleness, right? And be a little bit like Jesus, because isn't that what being a Christian is all about? Is that, That's literally the definition of Christianity, is somebody who's Christ-like, who tries to be like Christ. So, you know, don't be afraid to make friends with people who um, aren't exactly the holiest people right? They might be sinners or publicans, the Bible says, you know, Um, but maybe these people want to get it right. You know, maybe they have a heart to repent and turn back to God and start doing right. And, you know, you're not going to help them uh, get on that track by by treating them like they're less than you, right? Now, that's not to say that you should also not uh, call out the people who who are liars and hypocrites either, right? We should definitely not be afraid to uh, call people out who who need to be rebuked, um, but you know we need to give grace to the humble and we need to be merciful towards others. We need to be the salt of the earth. The Bible says, "For if the salt had lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted again?" Right. So if somebody screwed up, they know they screwed up. Give them another chance, you know. And for somebody who you know maybe accidentally screwed up, show them some patience. Show them some kindness. Be the salt of the earth. And and for the rest of the people who refuse to admit that they screwed up and they just want to ride their holy high horse, remind them that sinners and harlots will see the kingdom of God before they do. 
And anyways, that's my message for the day, guys. I don't want it to go too long. Just remember that God receiveth, receiveth sinful men, right? If that's you, you have a chance to get it right today. He'll take you back. He'll receive you back. And 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 if that's somebody you know, maybe somebody you know who's who's uh, being hurtful or mean to you, pray for them. Be kind to them. Don't return hate for hate, but return hate for love. Um, but anyway, that's my message for the day, guys. Just remember that uh, what you may consider trash, that might be God's greatest treasure right there that he died for. So just remember that. Anyway, in Jesus' name, that's my message. Let's let's bow in prayer, and then after that, we'll uh, take a reading from I think I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter four. But let's bow in prayer first. <sighs> Dear God, thank you for this message. Thank you for giving us another beautiful day here on your glorious uh, planet Earth. That's just so perfect here, Lord. Uh, we're not perfect people, but your creation is is amazing, and we love it. And we thank you for accepting us, even though we aren't perfect, Lord. Even though we constantly fall short of your glory all the time, Lord. And you and you just keep giving us a chance to get it right. And you keep loving us and doing good to us, Lord. Help us uh, humble ourselves to uh, love our neighbors who maybe not be so friendly towards us. To treat them like you treat us and to bless them and do good to them, Lord. Especially those who uh, ignore us or or use us, or abuse us, Lord, who don't give us any credit for our good works, who mock us. Father, help us treat them with love, and let our light shine, or excuse me, let your light shine through us, and reach them with the glorious gospel, and help them see that we're different, you know, as your children, that we act differently. As Christians, we love those who uh, who hate us. And maybe that will uh, turn their hearts and turn their minds to you, Lord. Thank you for this message and thank you for all that you do. Father, please bless this message and bless the people that hear it today. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so our final reading, because as always, I always give God the last word, is going to be from Galatians, or excuse me, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 21 through the end of the chapter. God bless you guys. Have a good day. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20 uh, verse 21 says, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor working with his hands a thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good. The use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. But let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you, with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, is forgiving you. Amen.